Ayan guys, may sounds na ba? Hi guys, welcome back. Hi guys. Ayan, may sound na ba, may sound na ba tayo ngayon guys? Hi guys, welcome back to another Gab's Cryptocurrency video where we trade by data, not by hype. And yeah, hopefully meron na kayong sounds ngayon. And yeah, can you confirm? So yeah. Good evening guys and welcome back to another Gab's Cryptocurrency video where we trade by data, not by hype. So right now, the Bitcoin price has broken out from this Descending triangle exactly as predicted. And right now, if you have entered a long position from this area, then for sure, you are already in profits. So right now, the Bitcoin price is already breaking out. And of course, damay-damay dito lahat ng altcoins. And as long as Bitcoin is moving healthy and hindi pa natin ma-break yung all-time high or hindi naman all-time high siguro if hindi nyo pa nababreak yung previous high, then this is a good altcoin movement as long as we are in this area. So yeah, as long as Bitcoin stays within that area, then I think altcoins will be healthy as of the moment. So in this video, we're going to dive into different altcoin movements such as yung ito nga, Ethereum price action. Kasi look at this, Ethereum went to our target exactly as predicted. Same goes with Cardano actually nag-breakout tayo, but papasadahan natin siya mamaya. We'll also dive into XRP. Kasi kay XRP, meron din tayo update kay XRP. Same goes with V chain. So, lahat sila papasadahan din natin within this video. So, yeah. Look at this, guys. So, alam natin na previously, kung napanood yung video kahapon, it's already a Bitcoin September decision time. And of course, this will affect SLP and Ethereum. So, if you have seen this video, then congratulations sa inyo kasi nakapasok kayo dito sa ating latest price action ni Bitcoin. So, yeah. Let's look into the Bitcoin price. What's next for the Bitcoin price? So, di ba nag-breakout tayo dito? So, ayan, exactly break. Breakout tayo dyan kasi meron tayong buy volume. And then, yeah. So, ang target natin dito is actually this 51.7k dito kay Bitcoin price. So, yun yung kailangan natin abangan dito kay Bitcoin price which is the 51.7k US dollars dito. So, ano ba yung kailangan din natin tingnan dito? We need to look at the RSI. So, let's look at the RSI. So, right now, for the Bitcoin price, we are not yet over, overbought dito sa ating RSI for the 4-hour time frame. So, this would mean na pwede pa tayo umakit actually kasi hindi pa tayo overbought. But, if you're going to look at this in the daily time frame, in the daily time frame, dito mo makita kung saan tayo pwede mauntog. Tingnan nyo yung bearish divergence na nag-form dito sa daily time frame. And as of now, as of now, hindi pa tayo nauntog dito sa ating daily time frame. So, possible na umakit pa tayo dito kay Bitcoin further. So, yeah, pwede pa kayong mag-abang-abang dito. Pwede pa kayong mag-hodl kasi wala pa tayo dun sa mismong resistance dito kay Bitcoin at the RSI. So, pwede pa natin makontinue talaga yung RSI trend na yan. So, abangan nyo yan, guys. And as of now, yun, yun pa lang siguro yung pwede natin tingnan as of, as of this moment. Kasi yung, mga, yung early time frame, mm, Siguro pwede mo siya sundan. Maganda yung early time frame kung gusto mo mag-re-enter ng any position. So, if ever na, let's say, gusto mo pumasok dito sa Bitcoin price. Then, of course, yung early time frame pullback, doon maganda mag-enter. So especially, pag nag-pullback siya to the 20 moving average, doon ka, of course, pwede yung mawal kay Bitcoin price. Kasi if you're going to look at this, the best entry would always be the 20 moving average. So, yeah. Yun yung ating kailangan tingnan ngayon kay Bitcoin price. Gusto nyo humawal kay Bitcoin price. Pero, right now, siguro, for me, medyo huli na to. You already had the chance to enter dito. So, ngayon, ano ba yung next move dito, kay? So, ngayon, ano ba yung mga pwede natin tingnan din? So, I guess yun lang muna for now. Kay Bitcoin. And yeah, take note guys, nag-open din ako na 800 US dollars position dito kay Bitcoin. So, nakalong ako ngayon. So, yeah, I'm already in profits dito kay Bitcoin. Naka-15% ako dito sa 800 position size ko for the Bitcoin price. So yeah, nakalong, nakalong pa din ako, hindi ko pa siya kinaklose. However, dito sa Bing Bond, nag-close na ako ng position ko. So makikita mo na nag, dito sa recent trade ko, kinlose ko na siya. Of course, gusto ko mas safe yung trade dito sa Bing Bond kasi syempre pera nyo yung nandyan eh. Pero let me know guys if gusto nyo mas risky yung trade ko dito sa Bing Bond or, or yung safe pa din. 
Kasi pwede tayo mag-shift dito na into a riskier trade rather than sa safe trade position. But yeah, if gusto nyo gawin kong, gawin kong riskier trade dito, comment nyo dyan guys sa down, comment nyo guys dyan sa ating chat box para gawin natin riskier dito sa ating trade. But yeah, that's for the Bitcoin price and let's move on to other altcoins naman. So for Ethereum, look at this guys. For Ethereum, we actually went to our target exactly as predicted dito. So look at that guys. We actually broke this ascending triangle. And look at this guys. Itong video nung pinost ko na isang araw. Nung pinost ko na isang araw, sabi natin, nag expect tayo ng breakout kay Ethereum anytime soon. Sabi natin, it's a massive warning and opportunity for the whole crypto market this September. So if napunod nyo itong video, then of course, nasabayan nyo yung breakout ni Ethereum dito. So yeah, right now, that's a good take profit area ngayon kay Ethereum. May mga iba nagtatanong kung gusto nyo ba humabol, kung maganda ba humabol dito ngayon. I don't think na maganda na humabol kasi late na for me para kay Ethereum. Not unless magkaroon ka ng pullback dyan. So, if gusto nyo talaga mag-pullback dito kay, gusto, if gusto nyo talaga mag-enter kay Ethereum, wait for another dip ulit kasi medyo huli na kayo eh. Look at this sa ating 4-hour time frame. Mas maganda humabol sa mga trades sa, sa ating 4-hour time frame kasi if you're going to look at it in a shorter time frame, of course, inconsistent yung kanya movement. Pero sa 4-hour time frame, mas accurate tayo kasi look at that. Tuloy-tuloy yung green candles natin dito sa 4-hour time frame. So, if gusto nyo talaga mag-enter, the 20 moving average in the 4-hour time frame, yung pinakamagandang i-enter. So yeah, that's for Ethereum right now. Hindi maganda mag-enter ngayon kasi look at that. RSI is very overbought. At somehow, nagkakaroon na tayo ng possible momentum na mag-consolidate dito kay Ethereum. So, for me, huli na talaga kay Ethereum. Let's look at XRP naman. Kasi kay XRP, nag-breakout tayo sa recent opportunity natin dito. So, kay XRP naman, kung, napanod, kung nakita nyo yung latest signal ko na meron tayong descending triangle, ito actually yung triangle na nakita natin for XRP. So, for XRP, pinost ko to nung isang araw din. I think... It's the other the other day siya eh. Pinost ko na meron tayong opportunity for XRP. I think it's this one. Yeah. It's this same video. So, yun, pinost natin na meron tayong opportunity for XRP. And look at that. It broke out exactly as predicted dito, guys. So, congratulations if you have entered dito sa ating XRP analysis. So, look at that. Meron tayo kasi descending triangle. So, as you all know, guys, descending triangle, that's an imminent move either to the upside or to the downside. Pero traditionally, that is a movement to the downside. Pero remember, in order to confirm a move, kailangan natin ng buy volume. And look at that. We had that buy volume indicating na that's a good buy signal. So ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo guys na the best place to enter a trade is pag nagkaroon tayo ng 4-hour candle close above the resistance and a buy volume. Ngayon, meron tayong confirmation doon. Of course, doon tayo nag-enter ng trade dapat. So ganun din yung ginawa ko dito sa Bitcoin actually. Kung naalala nyo kanina umaga, kung may nakita dun sa trade ko, nag-abang lang talaga ako ng 4-hour candle close dito sa ating Bitcoin price. Tapos nung nagkaroon siya ng, ng breakout, tsaka ako nag-enter ng position dito kay Bing Bon. Kaya ako nag-open ng copy trade kanina umaga. And then of course, nag-open din ako ng long position ko, ng eight, yung $800 position ko dito kay Phoenix. Nag-open din ako dyan. So, yun yung, yun yung basis ko palagi guys. The volume and of course, a 4-hour candle close. So yeah, ngayon yun yung nakita natin dito kay XRP. Ano ba yung next target natin kay XRP? Well, of course, ang unang target natin na kailangan mag-break is this 1.3 US dollars. Pero yung pinakang technical target talaga natin for XRP is actually, ito yung technical target talaga. Ang technical target is 1.38 US dollars for XRP. So you can actually huddle this, pero you could actually take a partial profit dito sa ating 1.29 US dollars resistance. And then, siguro ayun, take partial profit, siguro mga 30 or 50% dito. Pero yung pinakang take profit for the short term is dito sa ating 1.38 US dollars for XRP. So yeah, that's for XRP. Alam, alam nyo na ngayon yung mga areas na kailangan i-watch out. Let's look at VeChain naman. Kasi kay VeChain, nag-post din tayo kahapon ng isa ding signal kay VeChain. Which is, actually, ito pala yung VeChain. Yung, kanina, yung XRP is nalagpasan natin dito. Pero, yeah. Ito yung sa VeChain ngayon. Meron kasi tayo dyang support and support and resistance area. And of course, as what we have been mentioning, 
when ang coin consolidates, dun tayo makita ng pump. Ilang beses ko sa inyo guys sinasabi, for the past few days, dapat mag-enter kayo ng coins na nagko-consolidate. Kasi may iba sa inyo, tinatry pa humabol sa Solana. When in fact, tapos na yung pump niya. ba diba sinasabi ko sa inyo guys? Huwag kayo humabol ng pump. Sumabay kayo sa may mga consolidation. Which is, ayun nga, kay VeChain, kay XRP, kay Ethereum, kay Bitcoin. So, ayan guys, ito yung sinasabi ko na sa inyo na the best place to enter is during a consolidation phase and of course, the more na nag- nagpo-consolidate yung coin, dun tayo more likely makita ng pump. And nangyari yun dito sa Bitcoin, kay Ethereum, kay Cardano, kay XRP, kay VeChain. So, yeah. Ano ba yung ngayon yung next target natin for VeChain? Well, ito yung ating next target. Tingnan natin dito. Actually, malapit na tayo sa target natin which is around 1.47 US dollars kay VeChain. So, yeah. This is, right now, nasa good take partial profit area tayo ngayon kasi of course, nasa resistance tayo. Pero if magkaroon tayo ng 4-hour candle close at masustain natin itong area na yan, of course, ang first target natin would be this 1.47 US dollars, di ba? For VeChain. Pero if na-break natin yan at nagkaroon tayo ng consolidation above this area, ito, if the hold natin tong area na yan, then our next target would be the 1.47 16 US dollars dito kay VeChain. So, yun yung kailangan niyo i-watch out ngayon kay VeChain. Ano pa ba gusto niyo tingnan? Let's look at Cardano din. So, for Cardano, nagkaroon din tayo actually ng ascending triangle. Let's look at this ascending triangle. Kasi kay Cardano, ito yung ating ascending triangle and nag-breakout na tayo actually. So, ito yung ating target for Cardano. So, ascending triangle and technical target is around 1.36 US dollars. So, 1.36 US dollars ang ating target for Cardano. However, mas maganda siya tingnan sa 4-hour time frame kasi doon mas accurate yung ating movement. So, gawin natin mas conservative to. Mabaan natin siya and then yan. 1.36 ang target natin for Cardano. So, remember, follow the 4-hour kind of follow the 4 hour time frame very closely kasi doon tayo mas accurate yung movement. The early time frame can be very misleading kasi look at this. Ito yung early time frame ni Bitcoin. Sobrang gulo niya. Pero if you're going to look at the 4 hour time frame, doon mas accurate yung movement. So, right now, the 4 hour time frame is the most accurate time frame dito kay Bitcoin price. So yeah, tapos na tayo dito. So, meron tayong Bitcoin, meron tayong Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, VeChain, and... Yeah, let's look at some NFT tokens naman. So guys, if you want to support the channel and tingin nyo nag-profit kayo, yeah, you could drop some donation dito sa ating YouTube Super Chat. So if you want to support the channel, you can leave a donation dito sa ating YouTube Super Chat. Pero yeah, let's dive into NFT tokens naman such as SLP, Axe Infinity, and different NFT tokens. And the best place to trade ME, and the best place to trade NFT tokens is actually in MEXC Global. Kasi dito kay MEXC, you can leverage trade different NFT tokens such as SLP, Axe Infinity, and many more. So, let's look at Axe Infinity. Kay Axe Infinity, meron tayong nagpo-post na bagong, hindi naman bago, nandun pa rin tayo sa window ni Axe Infinity na pwede tayo mag-pump anytime soon. Let's look at this movement. Kasi look at this, kay Axe Infinity, ang, ma- ang kailangan mangyari sa mga coins is kailangan mag-consolidate para magkaroon tayo ng good movement na pump. Pwede tayo mag-pump yung nagkakaroon ng consolidation. Pero look at this. Axe Infinity has been moving sideways for a rel- relatively ang long, a long time. And let's look at the 100 moving average. We are at the same area na dun tayo mag-expect ng pump. So, I think at some point, at some point, dun tayo makita ng breakout move kay Axe Infinity. Kasi eh, no? We are at that same area. So, it's a matter of time kung kailan tayo magwa-pump. Pero right now, kailangan natin ng volume in order to confirm a pump. Wala pa tayong volume ngayon eh. So, right now, hindi pa, wala pa tayong confirmation. Pero right, this is a, this is looking good for Axe Infinity. And kailangan natin siya ma-break. Ano ba yung next target natin dito kay Axe Infinity? Of course, the Fibonacci target pa din yung ating target dito. So, let's, let's draw a Fibonacci retracement. And you would actually clearly see na meron tayong Fibonacci area na nagkakaroon ng consolidation area. So, itong area na ginawa natin kanina is actually the same consolidation dito kay Axe Infinity. So, right now, it has to break this Fibonacci resistance in order to flip bullish again for Axe Infinity. 
So right now, hindi pa natin siya na break. So expect more consolidation. However, this is a good, this is a very healthy and good consolidation area. Kasi as you could recall, whenever a coin is consolidating such as VeChain, XRP, Cardano, Ethereum, may Bitcoin, napansin nyo siya guys, di ba lahat? Every time na nagkakaroon ng consolidation, doon nagkakaroon ng pump. So right now, it's a matter of time kung kailan tayo magpapump kay Axe Infinity. So, I think this is a good thing na kailangan nyo i-watch very closely. The moment na magkaroon tayo ng buy volume dito, the moment na nagkaroon ng massive buy volume kay Axe Infinity, then that's a good confirmation na magpapump tayo kay Axe Infinity. Kasi one thing's for sure, yung common thing sa lahat na meron dito is in consolidation, pati yung confirmed buy volume. Which is makita mo dyan sa mga both coins natin. Ayun na may buy volume, buy volume, and kay Bitcoin may buy volume. So, yun yung kailangan nyo tingnan ngayon sa lahat ng mga coins sa pinafollow nyo. Which is buy volume and of course, those consolidation area. Now, that's for Axe Infinity. Let's move on to Axe Infinity. Let's move on to SLP naman. So, I believe yesterday meron din tayong technical analysis for SLP. Kasi dito, sabi natin dito kay ano, sa previous video natin kahapon, we are actually expecting a pump for SLP. If you, if you have seen yesterday's video, if naging healthy si Bitcoin, at the same time, naging overbought, ay naging oversold pala, I mean, naging oversold si SLP, doon tayo makita ng move. And look at this, guys. Diba ayan? Nagkaroon tayo ng overbought area, nagkaroon ng Bitcoin move. Ang naging effect nito is this massive move na nakita natin today. Which is, ayun, no? Because of that being overbought, nagkaroon tayo ng pump. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, guys, na kahit ano pa sabihin nyo, yung TA pa din talaga, nagmamatter, kahit sabihin nyo na, oh, depende naman, dependent pa din yan sa mga, may iba kasi magkasabi na dependent pa din yan sa mga balita or dependent pa din sa mga, kung ano yung gagawin ng mga developers. Pero remember, ito kasing mga technical indicators natin are based on data and of course, they are they are market psychology. So, especially itong mga RSI natin, ang laking tulong nito sa atin para ma-navigate kung kailan tayo makita ng pump. And look at this guys, every time na nakita natin itong trend na every time na bumababa siya dito sa ating 30 threshold kay RSI, ayun no, 30 threshold, 30 threshold, 30 threshold, another 30 threshold, 30 threshold. Take note guys, those 30 threshold kay RSI, dun tayo nakita ng massive buy volume. So, ayun no, massive buy, so 30 threshold, 30 threshold, another buy. 30 threshold, another buy. Another 30 threshold, another buy. And then this one, another 30 threshold, that's another buy. So, dun tayo more like makita ng pump, every, every time na nakita tayo ng SLP going down to the 30 threshold. So, ayun nga, nakita natin siya guys mag-play out exactly as predicted. So, congratulations sa inyo kung inaabangan yung 30 threshold very closely dito sa ating RSI. Pero right now, ano ba yung kailangan nyo tingnan kay SLP? So, ba sabi natin kay SLP, doon tayo makita ng pump. Pero ang tanong, are we bullish with SLP? Are we bullish with SLP? Ang tanong. Well, remember, ang lagi ko sinasabi sa inyo, we are only going to flip bullish if ma-break natin yung 100 moving average in the 4-hour time frame. Kasi look at this. We are going to be bullish every time na we are above the 100 moving average. Pero right now, we are always getting rejected by this 100 moving average. Therefore, we are not yet bullish. So bago kayo, bago tumaas yung mga hopes nyo na sabihin nyo na bullish na tayo kay SLP, to damo na tayo kay SLP. I don't think so. You need to look at the chart very closely kasi you have to zoom out. It may be bullish in the early time frame kasi ayun o, kay early time frame nag-breakout na tayo. But in the 4-hour time frame, it's not yet bullish. So before you get your hopes up dito kay SLP, hindi pa kailangan nyo muna tingnan yung 4-hour time frame at kailangan nyo abangan yung 100 moving average if na-break na natin. Kasi right now, hindi pa natin siya na-break, therefore hindi pa tayo bullish. So nakita nyo yung latest post ko, ba sa Telegram, sa Facebook, sa Discord. Sabi natin, we are only going to flip bullish if na-break natin yung 100 moving average. 
And right now, di pa natin siya never break. So, we are not yet bullish. So yeah. Ngayon, ano ba yung next na kailangan yung tingnan? Well, despite of this 100 moving average, hindi pa natin siya ma-break, then possible na bumaba, mag-decline pa tayo or mag-consolidate. And then in that case, ang kailangan yung ulit abangan is bumaba si RSI sa 30 threshold ulit. So, if ma-reject natin to at hindi natin na-sustain yung, if hindi natin na-hold si 100 moving average, then possible na mag-decline pa tayo ulit. Kasi ba diba sabi natin dito sa previous video, kailangan natin ma-break yung moving averages. If hindi natin siya na-break, then of course, magde-decline pa din tayo kay SLP. So yeah, yun yung kailangan niyo watch out very closely for SLP. And guys, the best trade to trade, the best place to trade SLP is actually in MEXE. Kasi in MEXE, you can actually leverage trade SLP. You can actually long or you can short SLP dito sa ating MEXE.com. So, if you want to trade dito kay MEXE, you can actually use my sign-up link. Makita nyo dyan sa description down below. Meron tayo dyang mga bonuses sa ating trading fees. So, if you want to trade dito kay MEXE, I highly suggest na use my sign-up link na makita nyo dyan sa description down below. And yeah, also, let's go back dito kay Bitcoin. Yeah, so far so good dito tayo dito kay Bitcoin. Seems na packet tayo. Thanks KC Amsterdam for the donation. I appreciate it. Sana nakatulong sa inyo. Now let's look into the live chat. Tingnan natin yung mga sinasabi nyo. And congratulations guys. We are actually at an all-time high dito sa ating views natin kay Bitcoin. Dito sa ating Bitcoin watch party. 400 views tayo for tonight. May nagka-suggest BNB. Sige, papasadaan natin si BNB. May mga nag-suggest, gusto nyo gawing risky yung trades natin kay Bing Bon? Sige, gawin nating slightly riskier, pero take note na yeah, mas risky, mas delikado yung ganung move. Sige, tingnan natin siya in the coming days. Right now, naka-open pa din yung long position ko kay Bitcoin dito kay Femix. So, if you want to trade Bitcoin with the lowest fees possible, I highly suggest na you try Femix. Meron akong sign-up link. And then you can also get up to 2,000 US dollars bonus kay Femix if you just use my sign-up link. Let's look at B-Chain ulit kasi malapit na tayo kay B-Chain mag-hit dito. Yeah, malapit-lapit na tayo kay B-Chain. XRP, we are about to hit a resistance to kay XRP so need to watch that one out very closely kay XRP. Medyo delikado to if ma-resist tayo ng, ng itong previous high niya. For Cardano, we are still at this move movement. Pero, yeah, hindi pa tayo overbought. So, I think pwede pa tayo umakit dito. Ethereum, not a good enter ngayon. Not a good entry position. Let's look at BNB. Sige. <laughs> yes, sir. Risky sa Bing Bon. Let's look at BNB, BNB USDT. Thirty tutorial for futures trading. Sure. Magi futures trading tayo tutorial in the coming weeks. May mga nakakapipeline pa kasi ako mga videos para sa inyo. May mga topic ako na gusto idos ka sa inyo so abangan yung mga ibang videos. Now let's look at this for BNB. So right now for BNB. Nag-breakout na tayo actually. Or no, actually hindi pa pala. Let's look at the Fibonacci retracement. Kasi kay Fibonacci retracement, yung pinaka-accurate natin dito na charting. Hide natin to and then let's draw a Fibonacci. Previous high to the lowest low. And then ayusin lang natin siya. You can actually clearly see na meron pa din tayong resistance. But right now, reset chart natin. I think meron tayong good window area rank ngayon for BNB. Meron tayong actually, ngayon ko lang to actually nakita na meron tayong falling wedge and then nag-breakout tayo din sa falling wedge na yan. So, ang technical target for BNB is actually this top of the wedge which is around 501 US dollars. But yeah, if mag if magkaroon tayo ng candle above this 509 US dollars, then doon tayo makita ng pump for BNB. But right now, yeah, we are still inside this Fibonacci resistance, so possible na mag-consolidate pa tayo dito. 
So yeah, I think pwede pa siya mag-continue kasi hindi pa overbought si BNB. Oh. So pwede pa siya mag-continue. Crypto Zoom, sige. Da- pasadahan, na- pasadahan natin si Crypto Zoom. So guys, if you want to support the channel, you can leave a donation dito sa ating YouTube Super Chat. So yeah, let's look at Crypto Zoom ngayon. So for Crypto Zoom, let's look at this latest movement right now. So right now we are declining for Crypto Zoom and nagkaroon tayo ng good buying opportunity dito kasi naging overbought, overbought dito sa ating RSI kay Crypto Zoom. As you can see dito sa 4 hour time frame naging below the 30 threshold tayo so that was a good buying opportunity. However, we are pretty bearish right now kay Crypto Zoom kasi we are below the 100 moving average. Though kulang yung data natin para masabi natin na we are pretty much confirmed the bearish kasi kailangan natin yung 200 moving average which is right now hindi pa nagpiprint dito sa crypto zone kasi kulang pa yung data natin but right now I think this is going to be a bearish move not unless mabreak natin itong 20 moving average in the 4 hour time frame let's look at the early so yeah in the early pretty much ito pag ganito yung movement pretty much sideways to kasi Hindi, con- hindi, hindi consistent yung movement natin dito eh. The deepet po sir, Gab. Is it okay pa rin to in- invest? Uh, alam nyo guys, if mag invest kayo, mag invest na lang kayo sa mga top 10 coins. Yun yung personal preference ko, personal opinion ko sa inyong lahat. And yeah, bakit ba mas okay sa top 10 coins? Kasi most of the time, yung mga top 10 coins, dahil doon yung, mar- yung pinakamarami market cap, doon more likely mag invest yung majority ng crypto market. So, if I were you, as long as may position mo na kayo sa, sa inyong mga top 10 coins, then I think, doon yung mga maganda opportunity para makaipon kayo ng pera. Kasi, of course, the top 10 coins, sila yung more likely nag, nag, nag-stand na sila throughout the test, throughout time na. Kasi, of course, si Bitcoin, nag-stand na siya for 10 years, Ethereum, nag-stay na siya for, nabuhay na siya for 7 years, 6 years. Cardano, ilang years na din siya nabuhay. So, yeah. I highly suggest, if you want to invest talaga, invest in the top 10 coins talaga. Let's look at other, ano pa talaga, uh, other coins. Solana daw, Solana. So, let's look at Solana. So, for Solana, ito talaga yung movement natin. Let's look at the 4-hour time frame kasi dun mas accurate. So, let's draw a Fibonacci retracement dito kay Solana sa previous high niya noon. So, ito yung previous high ni Solana noon. And then, nag-drop tayo to its lowest low. I think this is a good previous high, tingin nyo. Or, actually, ito. I-plot natin dito sa mas malaking movement. So, ayan. Ito yung ating Solana. And, ang actually, ang ganda pala nito, guys. So, look at that. Nagkaroon tayo ng resistance kay Solana exactly dito sa ating Fibonacci retracement. So, indicating na meron pala all this time, meron tayong technical target for Solana. Kasi, look at that. Nagkaroon din tayo ng resistance at this specific area kay Solana. Ayan, no? Fibonacci, Fibonacci resistance. And then, nag-pump siya na na-break natin si, si Fibonacci resistance. So right now, possible na mag-consolidate tayo dito for Solana. Not unless, not, makakita tayo ng pump, if ever na ma-break natin yung itong ano, 123 US dollars level. Kailangan natin na 4 hour, ta- 4 hour candle close above the 123 US dollars in order to confirm a massive move. Right now, actually walang bearish divergence dito sa, sa Solana. So possible na umakit pa tayo. So, I think this could more likely consolidate kasi wala tayong bearish signals ngayon dito sa ating Solana. So, possible na mag-consolidate to further. And then, siguro the moment na mahabol natin yung 50 moving average. Kasi if you're going to look at this, nag-pump tayo after touching the 50 moving average. Let's look at the 100. No, walang 100. Walang nangyari sa 100. So, more likely sa 50 moving average. If mag-touch tayo sa 100 moving, 50 moving average, baka dun tayo mag-pump. 
Pero right now, huli na kayo, medyo huli na kayo for Solana eh. So, it's time to look for different coins na ngayon. XRP, huli na rin. Cardano, pwede pa kasi siguro humabol dito, pero, yeah, I think okay pa din naman siya. Bitcoin, huli na din kasi kay Bitcoin eh. So, matagal ko na sa inyo guys sinasabi na dapat nag- inaabangan nyo na yung mga gantong movement eh. Kasi may mga iba pinipilit pa din na mabul sa Solana. At yung mga nag- naging patient dito, yung mga naging patient during this area nitong consolidation with Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, sila yung mga nabiyayaan ng mga pump dito sa ating crypto market. So, if you have been waiting, if you have been patient with this movement sa mga ating crypto market, sa mga consolidation kaysa sa paghahabol ng pump, Then, of course, you are already in profits. Ang tinan nyo, may mga iba dito, tinaray humabol sa Solana. Nag-enter dyan, tapos nagulat sila, hindi na nag-pump. Samantala, yung mga nag-aabang dito ng consolidation at ng breakout, dun sila nakita ng pump. So, sana maging lesson yun sa inyo, guys, na huwag kayo humabol ng pump. Magtingin kayo palagi ng consolidation dito. So, kung saan nagka-consolidate, dun maganda mag-enter. So, tingnan din natin yung mga ibang suggestions nyo. Matic? Sige. Let's look at Matic. Matagal natin hindi na TAC Matic eh. So guys, if you want to support the channel, you can leave a donation dito sa ating YouTube Super Chat. So, yeah. Kung gusto nyo lang naman mag-support, just leave a donation. Paano malalaman sir kung 4-hour time frame titingnan or kung anong mang time frame? Wala ko personally, mas gusto ko tingnan yung 4-hour time frame regardless. Kahit anong, kahit anong coin. Kasi the 4-hour time frame gives us a more clear view sa buong crypto market. So, I prefer the 4-hour time frame better than the smaller time frame such as yung 1-hour. So, kaya yung, yung early time frame ko, for re-entry lang yun. Pero yung 4-hour time frame yung pinakang basis ko. So, let's look at form, let's look at, at let's look at Matic naman. So, for Matic, Ito yung movement natin. Nagkaroon natin actually tayo ng downtrend dito. I think this is also, oops. I think this is somewhat of a falling wedge. Yeah, you could say na this is a falling wedge. And ang technical target nitong falling wedge would actually be this area. Which is na hit na actually natin kay Matic. Ang technical target niya is yung top of the wedge which is ayan no. So 1.51 US dollars. Sayang hindi natin ito nakita, no? Ang gandang opportunity sana to kung nag-enter dito during this breakout kasi tinan nyo, may buy volume siya at nahita natin yung target. So, take profit area na ngayon for Matic. So, congratulations sa inyo kung nakapasok kayo dyan. Pero right now, take profit area yan. However, pwede pa ata din kayo pumasok kasi mm, not sure kung 100% pwede pumasok pero hindi pa siya overbought. Yun nga lang, isa lang yung isang indicator lang nagsasabi na na good selling opportunity na hindi maganda mag-sell. Pero other than that, this is already a good take partial profit area na yan eh. For Matic. Oh, thanks for the donation, Ron Cortez. Thanks, Sir Gab. Pwede pa sadaan ulit. Pwede pa sadaan yung dot and Axe Infinity. If goodbye pa ba ngayon and target if ever. Axe Infinity, napasadaan na natin goodbye siya kahit pa paano. Polkadot, sige, after nitong Matic. Yeah, but right now, for Matic, ito yung kailangan natin mo-break ngayon. But, yeah, take partial profit area ngayon. Not a good buying opportunity, not a good selling opportunity. Good take profit area naman siya for partially. So, yeah. So, I think, sana nag-take profit na kayo dito kay Matic. Let's look at Polkadot naman, kasi dun sa suggestion... Wow, oh, thanks for the donation, Irresistible. Very appreciated. Shoutout sa inyo, guys. Shoutout kay Irresistible. So, let's look at Polkadot. Kasi, ako personally, marami din akong hawak na Polkadot. And, yeah, nag nagkaroon din actually tayo ng breakout kay Polkadot. Actually, sayang ngayon lang din natin ito nakita. Kasi, if you're going to look kay Polkadot, meron tayong ito. I'm not sure I'm not sure if this, if you could consider this as a descending triangle kasi medyo malawak siya eh medyo malayo oh. But yeah, 
polka dot, ang technical target nito is by getting the height of this descending triangle and then lagyan natin siya sa point of breakout. Ang target niya is actually 32 US dollars which is na meet na natin yung technical target ni polka dot. So, yeah, this is a good take profit area na nga kay polka dot. And yeah, nagpo-form din tayo ng increasing price declining RSI. So good take part, good take profit area na to kay kay Polkadot if you're in for the short term. So ayun no. Declining RSI, increasing price, that's a bearish signal na. So tapos na for Polkadot. I don't think na maganda na humabol, huli na for Polkadot. But yeah. Take po, trick, take profit area na to for Polkadot. V chain na pasalan natin si V chain, you can actually scroll back. Balikan natin si Bitcoin. Kay Bitcoin, nagkaroon actually tayo ngayon ng bearish divergence sa, for, sa early time frame. So, possible na mag-decline to. Kay Bitcoin. Possible na mag-decline siya dito. Ayan. Ang worry ko lang dito actually guys is sa buong crypto market natin, meron tayong isang malaking problem. So, if you're going to zoom out, dito kay Bitcoin price. Let's look at the daily time frame. Meron pa tayong malaking resistance dito kay Bitcoin. So, delikado pa din tayo actually. Ayan o. Oh. Hindi pa natin masasabi na confirm move na tayo to the upside. Though, short term lang yung ating price action natin na makita tayo ng movement dito. Pero yung buong ano niya, yung buong movement niya, Medyo delikado pa actually. Kasi hindi pa natin napabreak yung ating major resistance dito kay Bitcoin. So right now, ayan no, hindi pa tayo 100% bullish kay Bitcoin. So for the short term lang tayo bullish. So bago kayo mag-invest ng malaki, siguro abangan nyo lang muna itong mag-break muna. If magkaroon tayo ng daily candle close above dito, above 51,000, siguro around 52,000, if magkaroon tayo ng candle close at 52,000 sa daily time frame, then doon tayo makita ng continuous move to the upside for the whole crypto market. Ngayon, kailangan nyo din tingnan si RSI kasi right now, RSI is still below the resistance. So, possible na mauntog tayo kay Bitcoin if mauntog tayo dito sa ating RSI resistance. So, right now, nagpapump yung buong crypto market. However, hindi pa tayo 100% confirm kasi hindi pa natin mabreak yung ating RSI. Litecoin. Sige, tingnan natin yung Litecoin. So, for Litecoin, let's look at LTC. Meron din ako actually LTC na hawak pa din ngayon. Let's look at ano lang, saglit. I-hide na natin tong mga iba na ka-open. Yeah, so, for LTC, ito na yung movement natin. So, actually, kay LTC, you could actually consider this as a double bottom, itong area na yan. Ayan o. You could actually say na this is a double bottom, double bottom pattern, which wherein ang technical target nito would actually be by getting the height of this double bottom, and then lagyan natin sa point of breakout. So, ang technical target niya is 190 US dollars. So, 190 US dollars yung technical target for Litecoin. So, yun yung kailangan nyo watch out for Litecoin, which is itong area na yan. Buy volume, kulang yung buy volume natin, no? Kulang yung buy volume, so possible na mauntog tayo at some point. So, yeah, watch out lang kasi kulang yung buy volume, possible na hindi siya tumuloy-tuloy dun. But yeah, 190 US dollars ang kailangan nyo tingnan. Be cautious of the buy volume lang kasi kulang yung volume natin. Mas malaki pa din yung volume natin dito noong ito oh. Noong the other day. This time na to oh. Mas malaki yung buy volume niya dito kaysa dito sa latest movement natin. So this would mean this is not a good sign. So yeah. Huwag muna kayo pumasok ng bagong trade ngayon for LTC, Litecoin. But be very cautious of this latest movement ngayon kay Litecoin nga lang. Dogecoin. Sige, Dogecoin tayo.
Let's look at Doge. Thanks, King J, for the donation. I really appreciate it. Shoutout sa'yo, King J. Sir Gab, paano malalaman if kulang ang buy volume para mag-continue yung breakout? Well, kulang yung buy volume pag, mas, pag let's say, yung previous buy volume niya mas malaki kaysa dun sa ano. Kung yari, ganito. Para masabi natin na confirm yung breakout, kailangan ng yung volume niya dapat mas mataas sa previous volumes niya. Pero if let's say, ang nangyari is yung buy volume niya is hanap tayo ng isang example. Actually, puro matataas yung buy volume nito eh. Pag, pero, in general idea dyan, if yung buy volume niya is equal pa din or hindi niya nape-break yung previous buy volume, then, hindi yan confirm breakout. Kailangan niya kasi ma-break yung buy volume siya dito. But yeah, dito kay Doge ko yung nagkaroon tayo ng buy volume so kaya na tayo nakita ng pump. Ano ba yung pwede natin tingnan dito kay Dogecoin? Well, kay Dogecoin, meron tayo actually, I think this is a symmetric triangle. Yeah. Symmetric triangle kay Dogecoin for the 4-hour time frame. Nag-break tayo to the upside. And actually, nahit na natin yung target. So, this is a take profit area na ngayon for Dogecoin. If you're in for the short term. So, ayun na, take profit area na to. Also, guys, may gusto din ako i-advise sa inyo. Personal advice to. Hindi ibig sabihin na take profit area na. Hindi ibig sabihin na na-meet na yung target. It's time to short. Hindi ganun. Pag na-meet na yung target, it's time to take profit. Hindi ibig sabihin na nag-profit na, kailangan nyo na mag-short. Hindi ganun. Kasi possible na, mag-consolidate lang si coin dito. So if nag-short kayo dyan, tapos nakita nyo, bigla nag-consolidate lang si coin, edi eh, kawawa kayo dyan, ba? So, ako sa inyo, kung ako sa inyo guys, hindi ibig sabihin na na-meet yung target, mag-short kayo. Ibig sabihin na take profit at out of trade na kayo. Huwag na kayo pumasok na kahit anong trade. Abangan nyo yung next indicators na mag-form. Kasi may mga nakita ko na time to short na ba? Time to short? No, that's not the way how you navigate the market. Ibig, pag nakita nyo na, na, na pag nakita nyo nang na-meet na natin yung target, you wait for another opportunity. Kasi remember, trade, pag nagkaroon tayo, magte-trade ka lang dapat kung may magandang opportunity talaga sa market. Hindi ibig sabihin na tapos na yung ganito move, it's time to do the opposite. Hindi ganun palagi. Sir, always bang partial take profit ka lang then DCA again sa spot? Yeah, ganun ako. Usually, partial take profit ako. Pero, as with regards to ano, with regards to spot wallet, hindi ako masyado nag-sell ng spot wallet ko kasi pag may huddle ako, as much as possible, hindi ko siya isa-sell kasi for long term naman yung position ko for spot. Pero right now, tinan nyo, meron pa din ako actually position ngayon dito kay ano eh. Kay... Asan na yung ano natin? Kay Bitcoin. Let's open another ano ala Safari. Weird na wala yung ating ano natin. New, mag new window na lang tayo. Let's look at Phoenix. And then buksan natin yung trading view. Speaking of shorting, hopefully may video din kayo soon on paano, on guide paano mag spot ng short position. Yep, actually yung video ko na ano tungkol sa bearish divergence yung sa mga RSI may ginawa akong video the other the other weeks pag nakita ka ng bearish divergence dun maganda mag-sell mag-sell short tinan nyo kay XRP nung namit natin yung ano itong partial take profit area nagkaroon tayo na resistance so For Cardano, pretty much sideways tayo dito. Ethereum is actually looking strong. Let's look at the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. So, 
So, for Ethereum to Bitcoin chart is actually looking healthy right now. Well, may malaking movement pala tayo dito for Ethereum to Bitcoin. So, yung Ethereum dominance is actually breaking out dito. However, meron tayong resistance na nag-form dito sa Ethereum to Bitcoin dominance. Let's look at the daily. So, ito may resistance tayo na nag-form dito kay Ethereum to Bitcoin dominance. So, nauntog siya dyan sa ating Ethereum to Bitcoin dominance. Speaking of dominance, let's look at the Bitcoin dominance. Tingna bigyan natin kayo na update sa Bitcoin dominance. TP na ba sa it? O oh, kanina pa guys. Namit na natin yung target, di ba? Nag nagsabi na ako na take partial profit na dito kay ano, kay Ethereum kasi namit na natin yung target. So, yeah. Siguro mag-scroll back ka lang. <laughs> kasi, or tingnan nyo yung mga ibang signals ko na sinasabi ko na take profit na. But yeah. So far, ito yung ano natin. Let's look at the Bitcoin dominance. Reset chart natin. And then let's look at the daily time frame. Actually, malapit na matapos yung altcoin season natin dito. Based dito sa ating Bitcoin dominance chart. Kasi ang technical target talaga nitong altcoin season natin is this area, which is ito. Naalala nyo guys, nung ginawa nating video, gumawa tayo ng video, video na nag-expect tayo na altcoin season. If mabreak natin tong rising wedge and nagplay out siya nakita tayo na massive pump sa mga altcoins so right now kailangan magdecline pa din so pero mukhang matatapos na ating altcoin season pag na-meet natin itong target na to ang bad news nga lang dyan guys if let's say nagbounce dito si bitcoin dominance tapos nagpump to then that will be another bitcoin season so in that case pag pumunta na dito si bitcoin dominance it's time to move your altcoins allocation to Bitcoin kahit papano kasi delikado tong area na to if na-hit natin tong Bitcoin dominance. So kahit papano, dapat maging ready na kayo if ever mauntog si Bitcoin dominance dito sa ating support dito. So yeah, siguro watch out lang kay dito kay Bitcoin dominance bag just in case na ano. If gusto nyo pa humawal sa mga altcoins. So kasi ba naalala nyo yung sinabi ko noon na ano, time to invest sa altcoins noon kasi Ang dito tayo sa Bitcoin dominant. So kung nag-invest kayo na altcoins dyan, then congratulations sa inyo. For sure, in profits kayo ulit. Let's look at the altcoin season index para may update din tayo. Altcoin season index. So ayun no. Iba sabi natin noon, is maganda mag-invest kay Bitcoin, ay maganda mag-invest ng altcoins noong peak ng Bitcoin season. Ayun no. Dito. Naalala nyo yung video na yun guys, na sabi natin, itong area na to, it's time to invest in altcoins. So if nag-invest kayo dyan, of course you're already in profits kay altcoins. So congratulations sa inyo kung nakahabol kayo dyan. And yeah, altcoin man tayo ngayon, no? so I think it's pretty good ngayon. Pero yeah, major warning pa din for me actually. So, kahit pa paano, you have to be very cautious ngayon. Kasi of course, una, meron tayong warning dito kay Bitcoin dominance. Pag nauntog tayo dyan, then possibly na matapos yung pump natin for the whole crypto market. And look at this, for the Bitcoin price, BTC, USD. Meron tayong malaking resistance na nag-form ngayon. So, you have to be very cautious right now for the whole crypto market. Kasi, it's very... It's very dangerous na ngayon to enter very big trades. Not unless ma-break natin talaga yung resistance dito. So right now, I don't... Kung ako sa inyo, kung meron na kayong trade, siguro take partial profit na kayo. Pero, mag-enter lang kayo ng, mag -enter lang kayo ng malaking trade if nagkaroon tayo ng daily candle close above this resistance. Or, if mag-decline tayo dito. So, Inyo dalawang scenario sila natin. Either ma-break natin to or ma-reject tayo. So yun yung kailangan nyo tingnan dito guys for the Bitcoin price. And of course for the whole crypto market siya. Especially guys dun.
Let's tingnan natin yung mga iba pang request. Sir Gab, anong oras po kayo nag-standard nag streaming? Well, usually, ang streaming ko is every Sunday or Saturday. Every weekend. Pero nagkataon lang na may stream tayo ngayon kasi, of course, this is a very big move ngayon kay Bitcoin. And of course, nagkaroon, tayo, nagkaroon kasi ako ng hectic schedule today. So, nag-stream na lang ako para kahit pa paano may content ako para sa inyo. So, ang dami kasing, ang dami kong ginawa today sa, ano, sa office and work. So, nag-stream na lang ako para ano, kahit pa paano may content tayo ngayon. Alice? Sige, let's look at Alice. Pasada natin si Alice. So, kay Alice, ito yung titingnan natin ngayon. Burayin na natin yung mga ibang support and resistance areas natin dito. Yung mga previous TA natin kay Alice. Well, mm, for our time frame, tingnan natin para mas maayos. Meron tayo actually isang bullish signal ngayon for Alice kasi meron tayong MACD cross o. Oh. Ayan o. Oh. So, possible siguro mag-breakout to. Pero, let's look at more indicators pa din. Medyo delikado kasi pag nag assume tayo ng movement eh. Sa ngayon, isa lang yung nakikita nating bullish indicator. Siguro, let's try to draw this downtrend. Let's try to draw on, uh, let's try to look at the early time frame. We could say na this is a descending or falling wedge. That's so traditionally a falling wedge would move to the up would pump to the upside. So usually it breaks to the upside si falling wedge. However, wala tayong buy volume. Ayun no, walang buy volume. So ito 'yung sinasabi ko kanina scenario. Pag walang buy volume, pwede tayong mauntog. So ayun na nauuntog tayo ngayon kay Alice. So kulang 'yung buy volume natin kay Alice para mag-pump. Pero meron tayong nagpo-form ngayon na bearish divergence of very short term. Ito. Ve increasing price, declining RSI. That's a trend reversal to the downside. So ngayon, I think maganda na mag-abang muna kay, kay Alice bago kayo mag-enter ng kahit anong trade. Kasi hindi pa siya magandang opportunity pa ngayon. Eh. Siguro yung kailangan nyo tingnan dito very closely is this itong support and resistance area na to. Possible na mag-consolidate dyan si Alice fall in the coming days. Ito. So, siguro abang-abang lang muna kay, kay, kay Alice. Wala pa talagang tradable, very tradable opportunity pa ngayon. Wala pang tradable opportunity for Alice. So, yeah, abang-abang lang kay for Alice muna for this moment. XRP, pasada, scroll back lang kay dito sa video, meron tayong XRP. <laughs> Kakami si Josel Sabater. What do you do for a living? Ah, uh, what do I do for a living? Ah, uh, actually isa akong, uh, previously naging full stack developer ako, pero ngayon, I'm leaning towards data architecture, data transformation, and data data ano ulit yung data integration so data architecture integration transformation anything that is data related ngayon yun yung aking field of technology ko ngayon field of work ko more on data but ang aking specialization is business analytics so i heavily focus on analyzing data talaga so yung mga gantong usual na ano analytics talaga yung mga sa python statistical analysis predictive analysis predictive analytics, mga ginagamit for decision support system, yung mga ganun. So, ganun yung mga ginagawa ko for a living sa work ko. Actually, hindi lang sa work, pero dati may mga previous researches din ako regarding 
yung mga ginagamit ng ano, ginagamit ng portion na rin yun sa four piece. Yung research doon, kami yung gumawa dati sa four piece. But yan, nawalan ng na cut off yung budget namin sa ano, research for four piece. Kaya hindi na hindi na natapos yung project namin sa four piece. But yeah. Matagal na naman na yun eh, so yeah. Yun yung ginagawa ko for a living. More on data analytics, business analytics, data architecture, data integration, mga ganun. Were you good in math? Hindi <laughs> ko masabing magaling ako sa math, pero gusto ko yung math. Yeah, gusto ko yung math, pero ayaw ko sabihin na magaling ako. Siguro, yung ma- may mga, siguro kung may mga classmates ako nanonood din ngayon, sila yung makakasabi. May mga, short course, may mga short courses po ba na analytics? Yup, marami. Maraming short courses analytics. You can actually check Udemy. Kasi sa Udemy, actually pwede nyo check sa LinkedIn ko eh. Dito sa LinkedIn. Tingnan natin sa LinkedIn. Dito sa LinkedIn ko, pwede nyo actually kopyahin yung mga inaral ko eh. Dito sa ano. Ito. Yung ginamit kong Saan nga ba yun? Ito, Python Data Science Fundamentals, SQL Databases, Fundamentals of Data Analytics, Object Oriented, ganun. Ayun. Siguro yun yung pwede nyo aralin. If gusto nyo mag, ano, more on data science and data analytics. Yun yung maganda yung mga, magandang aralin kasi pwede, sobrang applicable siya sa mga, ano, technical analysis talaga, for me. Yung mga, pag analyze kung ano yung mga ganun, yung moving averages, ganun. So, yeah. Data is king tayo. We trade by the data and not by the hype palagi. Ano po indication nyo when to invalidate an RSI divergence? Um, may invalidate lang natin yung divergence if, let's say, tingnan mo to sa daily time frame. Invalidated itong itong bearish divergence if magkaroon tayo ng candle close above the divergence. So, if nagkaroon tayo, let's say, nag-breakout siya dyan, then invalidated na yung bearish, yung bearish divergence natin dyan. So, do, doon natin malalaman. Thanks, Aldwin, for the donation. Shout out. What do you think of the play-to-earn revolution? Do you think, do you think some of some of them are scam, scams? Well, for me, play to earn is actually uh, revolutionary siya, of course. Maganda siya for the whole crypto market future. Uh, ako, for, for sure, very bullish ako for the whole NFT NFT market, NFT tokens, NFT NFT in general. Very bullish ako doon. However, there will be certain time na magde-decline siya. Kasi of course, what mo, what goes up must go down kasi if you're going to look at historical data ni Bitcoin i think it's very usual naman na ano na biglang babagsak yung buong yung buong market ng NFT kasi if you're going to look at historical data hindi lang naman sa NFT nangyari yung ganun eh look at this sa Bitcoin nung biglang nagpump si Bitcoin noon nagdecline din siya ng malakas after that massive hype ni Bitcoin noong 2014. So, I think after a very massive hype or very massive pump sa mga gantong market, possible na magde-decline siya na matagal kasi tingnan nyo to. Doon nag-pump si Bitcoin, nagkaroon ng malaking hype kay Bitcoin for around 41 weeks. Pero after 41 weeks, nag-decline si Bitcoin for almost, ano, 2 years. So, 2 years na nag-decline dito. So, Tingin ko, ganun yung possible na mangyari kay, sa mga NFT market natin or play to earn. Ma- maganda yung, so, so, pag sobrang bilis ng hype, malaki yung baba- mababawi dyang loss. So, yeah, siguro maging handa kayo sa kanyang, pag natapos yung bubble niya. Kasi pag nag-pop yan, dun matagal-tagal yung kanyang decline. No? Katulad yung nangyari kay Bitcoin noong simula niya. Matagal na tagal na, matagal-tagal yung decline, pero mabilis yung hype niya. So, 
normal lang naman na mag-decline yung buong market after a very big hype. So, tingin ko dapat kung gusto niya mag-invest, think long term at huwag kayo sumabay sa mga ano. Sa mga ano. Ayan, sa mga hype talaga. Shoutout from Ma'am Fuentes at Doc Kelly. <laughs> Nanonood ba sila dito? Doc Kelly. Tagal, ta- tagal ko na narinig yun na. Kasi sila Doc T. Sir Gab, gano'n po kayo katagal sa Mapua? Gano'n ako katagal sa Mapua? Uh, aaminin ko, hindi ako nagtagal doon mga ano. Nag-graduate kagad ako. After ano? After... Actually, regular, regular student ako. Nag-graduate kagad ako noon. So, yun lang sasabihin ko. Hanggang doon lang. Precision base ba yung nasa likod mo? Yup, precision base. How about, Master, how about, how about incoming Alonzo update ni Cardano? Well, yeah. Actually, maganda yung topic with Cardano. Eh. Kasi, very bullish tayo kay Cardano, di ba? Especially sa mga projects niya na nangyayari within the previous previous days. Of course, may upcoming projects si Cardano. Ang concern ko nga lang nun is may isang project din si Cardano nung around June. I think that's around, nakalimutan ko ano yung name ng event na yun. Dito. Around end of June siya eh. Dito sa ito. Anong problem, ang naging problem ko nun is uh, ang daming magandang news kay Cardano nun. Pero, hindi siya nag-pump. So, this would mean, hindi dependent masyado si Cardano sa mga news and hype. So, stick to data pa din tayo dito. So, yeah. Yun yung siguro kailangan nyo lang iyan, no? Isipin dito kay Cardano na hindi siya masyado dependent sa hype. do pwede, pwede nyo gawin yung buy the rumor, sell the news na y- ginagawa ng karamihan. Pero ako, hindi ko sasabayan yun. Stick to fundamentals pa din ako. <laughs> Gumraduate agad sa Mapua. Ngayon ko lang narinig yun ah. Ako rin, ngayon lang din ako narinig ng ganun eh. Tingnan natin iba pang comments. Sir Gab, pa-explain naman nung Bingbon. Para, para ba siyang itoro, sir? Yep, actually, parang itoro siya. So, sa Bingbon kasi, pwede ka actually mag-copy trade ng mga iba't ibang trades. So, kung yari, let's look at Bingbon. So, before you create an account sa Bingbon, you can actually sign up with my bonus. You can actually sign up with my sign-up link na makita nyo dyan sa description down below. So, if you sign up dito sa aking bonus, you can actually claim up to 120 US dollars bonus kay Bingbon. So, yeah, just use, up, just use my sign-up link. Pero, yeah, dito sa Bingbon, it's a crypto social trading network. By crypto social trading, ibig sabihin nito, yung iyong mga trades, pwede, mong, pwede ka kumopya ng trades na ginagawa ng ibang tao. So, kung yari, meron akong personal trade, tapos gusto nyo sabayan yung mga trades ko, pwede kayo mag-copy trade. So, magka-copy trade kayo by just going into copy trade. And dito makikita mo lahat ng mga traders na nag-trade dito sa crypto market, na sinashare nila yung trades. So, pwede nyo silang sabayan so, kung gusto nyo sababay ng specific trader, all you have to do is click or select a specific trader. Ang personal advice ko dito, pumili kayo ng trader na may mataas ng cumulative profit rate. And of course, pag tinignan nyo yung mga kanyang movement, kahit pa paano, good yung kanyang standing. So, and then, if nakita kayo ng gusto nyo i-trade, just click copy lang. And then, makopy nyo na yung trade niya. If you want to follow my trade, kung gusto nyo sabayan yung mga trade ko dito, from time to time, nagtatrade ako dito, all you have to do is search my username, Tristan Bal, or makita nyo yung, inv- yung invitation nito sa description dyan. Sa yung makita nyo yung invitation nito sa description down below. So yeah, you could actually just follow that or you can search my name dito, Tristan Bal, sa Bing Bon. Sir, what do you think of crypto trading in general? What percentage of my portfolio should I allot into it? Actually, wag kayo masyadong... Actually, for me, low risk lang dapat yung copy trading nyo kasi mahirap umasa masyado sa mga copy traders kasi malay mo, pumalpak si copy trader. 
pwedeng pwedeng madami yung inyong asset. So, as much as possible, yung kaya nyo lang din mawala. In, gen- in yung general general answer doon. Pero ako, nung nag-copy trade ako sa mga ibang traders doon, siguro parang around, siguro 10% lang ng available money ko noon yung pinasok ko dito noon. Nung nag-copy trade ako noon sa ibang traders noon. Pero yeah, yung kaya nyo lang mawala, basically. BCH naman, sir. Take profit na? Let's look at BCH. Good question. Let's look at BCH ngayon. BCH USDT. Do you play or participate in any crypto games? Planning to invest in Axie, is it still worth it? Ako, hindi ako masyado nagki-crypto games, pero nagpapinafollow ko yung mga tokens nila kasi, of course, trader. Gusto ko mag-long or short sa mga iba't ibang trading opportunities. So, playing playing crypto, playing play-to-earn games, di ako nagpa-play, pero trading them, yup, tinatrade ko sila. BCH, actually, mukhang maganda-ganda tong BCH, ha? Kasi look at this. Siguro, let's look at the 4-hour time frame. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Maganda opportunity to kay BCH, ha? If we're going to look at this, I think we are forming some sort of consolidation dito kay BCH. And yeah, as you all recall, guys, when a coin is consolidating, that's a good opportunity. So, siguro maganda tingnan to for the short term. So, abang-abang lang kayo dyan, guys, itong consolidation na yan. Kasi possible na mag-pump yan, eh. We all know, if nagkakaroon ng consolidation, dun tayo more like makita ng pump. And we have seen that multiple times nangyari siya kay Cardano eh. If you're going to look at historical data. Ganun yung nangyari kay Cardano. Ito. May mga consolidation phase tayo kay Cardano. Ito. Yan eh. Mga consolidation phases dyan. Doon tayo more makita ng pump. So right now, I think BCH is in is in a window ngayon na possible na mag-pump in the future. Ngayon, hindi pa siya magpa-pump. Consolidation area pa tayo. Pero the moment na ma-break natin itong resistance, possible na mag-pump tayo for BCH. So, siguro abang-abang lang kay, kay BCH ngayon. <laughs> Sana all pinasadahan lang ang mapuha. Mahirap din yung ginawa ko ng sumapuwa. Ang dami ko din ginagawang ano. Ang dami kong tinaanan na challenges nun. Pero, carry lang. May nakita ko magandang tanong dito. Sir, nag, sir Gab, nag-8 po din ba kayo ng mga penny crypto? Or, in short dito, sa, sa crypto market, hindi penny crypto ang tawag. Ang tawag shitcoin. Uh, ako, hindi ko masyado nakapagtiin ng mga shitcoin eh, kasi kulang yung time ko personally. So, yeah, hindi ko, hindi ko, hindi ko nakapag-trade ng mga shitcoin ngayon. Siguro kung marami kayong time, maganda mag-trade ng shitcoin, pero mayayari marami kang ginagawa sa day-to-day life mo. Ang hirap sumabay ng shitcoin kasi kailang, sugal talaga siya eh, kailangan mo unahan siya pag nag pag lumabas, and then abang, kailangan mo siya abangan kung kailan mag-pump on kailan ka mag-take profit. So, yeah, if maganda mag-shitcoin kung marami kang time, pero ngayon, kulang yung time ko for shitcoin, so hindi ako nag-shitcoin. Sa EY ka pala nag-work, sir? Nag-work, sir? Yep. Let's look at other comments. Nag-scroll back ako. Dev ka pala, sir? Yep, dev ako. If nag-take profit ka na po sa Bingbon, automatic ba na mag-take profit din yung mga nag-copy sa'yo? Yup, mag-take profit din yun. Sir Gab, nag-trade din po ba kayo ng Forex and Stocks? Nope. How can you easily eyeball patterns for technical analysis and spot whether it's consolidating, rising, or declining? It's really impressive on how you do it. 
Well, basically, actually, very simple lang. If, if hindi nagpa-pump, and if walang pump and dump, basically, yung movement niya is pag ganun lang, oh. Pag pag ganyan yung movement, then, that's a good opportunity. Kasi consolidating, eh. Ang general rule lang palagi, if pag ganun yung movement ng coin, then that's an opportunity. Pag nakita ka ng ganyan, that's not an opportunity. Pag nakita ng ganyan, opportunity for the long term, pero technically, pag pag ganyan, nev- it's never a good opportunity. Ibig sabihin yan, huli ka na. So remember, pag pag ganun yung movement, yun ang opportunity talaga. Kasi, of course, it tells us na meron tayong stable movement at healthy yung price action. So at some point, magkakaroon tayo ng either breakout to the upside or to the downside. So, ganun yung, ganun yung pinakang simple basis ko. If ever na pag ganun yung movement ng coin, then that's a good opportunity talaga for the crypto market. Paano po kayo natuto mag-TA? Nanood lang ako ng mga TA videos dito. <laughs> Top 1 ka pa parati, sir? Hindi eh. May mas stop palagi sa akin eh, mga ano. Yung mga kasabayan ko nun. Mga hayop yung mga yun. Ang galing mga scholars. Sir, may plano po ba kayo na hindi, hindi convert into fiat yung Bitcoin and Ethereum nyo? Yup. May mga, may mga positions ako na hindi ko i-convert to fiat. Kasi, kinoconsider ko siya as investment for the long term. VeChain daw malapit na. Let's look at VeChain. Oh, actually, malapit na tayo sa target kay VeChain, no? Congratulations, guys. Exactly as predicted na kay VeChain. Malapit-lapit na tayo. Lapit-lapit na. So, that's a good take profit area if umabot tayo dito sa so kay VeChain. XRP. Malayo-layo pa target natin pero may resistance tayo. V-chain. Lapit na natin mahitin target. Exactly as predicted. <laughs> so ito yung example din ng consolidation. Ayan no. Yung consolidation na yan. Polkadot. Yeah. Nahitin natin siya actually si Polkadot. So abangan natin tong si V-chain kung mahit natin yung target niya. Sayang hindi ko to na long eh. Dapat nilolong minsan gusto ko minsan talaga gusto ko maglong ng mga ganitong movement. Ang problema ko lang, ang hirap mag-follow ng maraming coin. Kasi syempre, iisip isipin mo meron kang day to, may day job ka. May day job ka, gumagawa ka pa ng videos tapos may out of out of work life ka pa. Ang hirap sabayan ng mga nitong ang hirap bantayan nitong lahat. Ayun na guys, mag-take, mag-hit na tayo sa ating technical target. Exactly. Congratulations sa inyo guys if nasabayan nyo to. Tingnan natin sa Facebook. Alam ko na post ko to sa Facebook. Eh. Let's look at that one. Let's look at VET. Alam ko may update tayo dito kay VET eh, previously. Most recent. Yup, meron nga. Ito. August 31. Up natin siya para may update tayo. Up. And look at that guys. If naging, if tinignan nyo to at inabangan nyo to, then of course, ayan no. Ayan. Ang ganda ng movement natin dito. Exactly as predicted tayo dito, guys. Congratulations sa inyo. 0.147 ang ating target. Malapit na tayo sa target ng 1.147. Actually, nahit na ba? Tingnan nga natin. Nag-147 na tayo actually dito kay ano? Kay VeChain. Pero tingnan natin kung maabutan natin yung target na yan.
aside sa F1, ano po pinafollow niyo na sports team? Football. Uh, fan ako ng Liverpool. Salamat sa sagot, Sir Gab. Pero paano po kapag sa shitcoin? Will it still apply in TA natin? Spe- specifically, bagong labas lang po. Yep, mag apply naman. As long as may data tayo, ma-apply siya. Pero if kulang yung data, mahirap i siya, of course. <laughs> Naralala ko ng first time mo na panood na kainom ka yata. Diniscuss mo din yung maganda yung o Mac over PC. Hindi ko nga actually maalala yun eh. Pero yeah, mas prefer kay Mac over PC. Favorite F1 driver? Well, ang favorite ko talaga si ano. Sergio Perez. Checko. Pero, yeah. Sayang nga eh. Cryptozone na pasadahan natin si Cryptozone kanina. You can maybe just scroll back. Ayaw nyo po i-full time yung crypto trading. Well, ako, mas prefer ko pa din yung day job talaga for me. Kasi sa day job may growth ka professionally eh. So, may iba kasi inisip nila yung day job as ano eh. Siguro depende, depende din kasi sa case to case yun. If maganda yung work mo, then of course maganda mag day job. Pero kung hindi maganda yung work, mahirap mag day job actually. Pero ako, tingin ko okay yung work ko ngayon eh. So, Ayaw ko pa din bitawan yung day job ko. Quant. Tingnan natin yung quant. May quant pa dito sa ating market. Ngayon ko lang, at- Ngayon ko lang actually narinig yung quant. Actually, wala yung quant dito. Let's look at MEXC. Yun yung 800, yung 800 position size ko dito kay Bitcoin is still in profit pa din. Still playing out. Wala eh, walang kwante. Eh. So, hindi ko siya alam kung saan ko pwede tingnan. So, how do you manage your time since may full-time job ka din? Uh, nagka-trade ako, ano? Sa morning, either morning, lunchtime, and after work. Doon ako nagka-trade. At saka, mahirap mag-trade ng shorter time frame. Kaya, as much as possible, sa 4-hour time frame ako natingin. Such as ito. For our time frame tayo palagi. Para pwede mo siya ipag-iwanan. Kasi let's say, titingnan mo yung 15 minute time frame. Kailangan mo siya tingnan from time to time. Ang hirap nun. So as much as possible, mas maganda tingnan yung movement at a bigger time frame. Para pwede mo siya iwanan. Mababalance mo yung work mo at saka ano. Balance yung work saka trading, saka kung ano pa yung buhay mo sa labas ng crypto. So, as much as possible, follow bigger time frames para pwede mo siya iwanan. I think Bitcoin is forming somewhat of a Tingnan natin to for the very short term. Parang may ascending triangle tayo kay Bitcoin, no? Tingnan nyo, guys. So, we'll break to to the upside. Then of course, ang target to kay Bitcoin would actually be Tingnan natin yung mangyayari dito. Possible na mabuhay ng 50.8k dito sa ano? sa 15 minute time frame for the very short term. Siguro watch out lang natin siya dyan, guys. Sir, saan po kayo nagko-convert ng crypto to PHP? Sa coins.ph ako. Mas prefer ko sa coins.ph. Hindi ako nag P2P masyado ng ano eh, ng conversion to Philippine Peso. O nga eh, Sir Gab, dati di ka nag-features. <laughs> Actually, ayoko talaga ng features eh. So, hanggang ngayon, kinukonsider ko pa din siyang sugal. For me. Let's, abangan natin tong 15-minute time frame dito kay Bitcoin. Tingnan natin kung mag-break siya. Pero yeah, right now, siguro, abang-abang lang tayo dito kay Bitcoin bago natin makita yung movement. VeChain, malapit-lapit na tayo. XRP, resistance pa din. Look at Cardano. Tingnan natin yung movement ni Cardano ngayon. Si Cardano, medyo kulang yung volume natin pero I think 
Sa mga good area siya. But yeah, take profit area natin is 3.37. Huddle po ba sa 4K? After 4K resistance? Actually, ako huddle pa din ako sa long term kay Ethereum. So, meron ako Ethereum position for long term na hindi ko sinasell. Ilan na overall losses mo, Sir Gab? Curious lang. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, ngayon kasi wala na akong loss. Pero, yung naging loss ko noon, ano ba? Siguro, pinakamalaki ko na yung ano, $100. Around, 5,000 pesos, ganun. 5,000 pesos na yung pinakamalaking loss ko. Tapos ever since dun, parang hindi ko malala yung huling loss ko <laughs> na malaki. Kasi either way, yung naglala, nagla, nagpapalaro na lang sa akin ngayon is mga profits ko eh. So, wala akong masyadong puhunan ngayon dito. Yung tinake out ko na yung capital ko usually dito. Or if may capital ako, yung mga capital ko nakalagay kay Bitcoin saka Ethereum. So, wala na ako masyadong ini, nilalarong ano, pera dito other than yung profits ko. So, and guys, siguro advice ko sa inyo, personal advice, if may money kayo, as much as possible, if in profits na kayo, take out your capital. Kasi, mas maganda na ang maglalaro dito sa inyo is yung profits nyo kaysa sa capital. Always secure your capital and your profits. For long term, ano mas okay? Bitcoin or Ethereum? Both. So, meron akong Bitcoin, meron ako Ethereum. Sila yung blue chip kasi for me eh. Ah, oh. Sa Bingbon, hmm, may small loss ako, pero bawi na siya eh. Tingnan nyo yung sa Bingbon. Let's look at Bingbon. Copy trade. Let's stand by. Nabawi ko na siya eh. So, bawi na talaga ako dyan actually. Ayan o. No. Ito, nag-cash out ako nito. Kaya bumaba siya. Pero yeah. Bawi na tayo actually kay Bingbon. Ayan no. So, continue natin to. How much of your investing portfolio is in crypto? Very interesting question. Pero... I think around 80% or 85% ng pera ko na sa crypto. 85% to 90% na sa crypto. Ganun. <laughs> Kalaki. Let's look at sand. May nag-suggest ng sand. Sige, tingnan natin si sand. Mm, kay San, medyo mahirap sabihin pa ngayon eh. Siguro, ang maganda tingnan dito is nagkaroon tayo ng breakout kay Sand. Ayan o. Kaya tayo nakita ng pump kay Sand dahil sa ayun, consolidation na yan o. So, this is a good take profit. However, wala pa tayong magandang indicator right now for Sand. Kakatapos lang ng pump niya eh. Siguro, ang maganda lang tingnan ngayon dito is yung resistance na to. Pero other than that, wala pa tayong clear next move for sand as of this moment. So, siguro kung may sand kayo ngayon, if short term take profit pero long term, hodl pa din ngayon. Hodl pa din kayo for long term kasi wala pa tayong exact move. Oh, nga, 85% eh. Dami nag, di ba, dami nagkasabi na trade mo lang kaya mong mawala. Well, di ko naman siya tinetrade. Iba doon for investment. So, yeah, may reason kasi ako doon. Ang annual return ng Bitcoin in, on average is around 120% per year. So, kung per year, i-compare mo naman siya doon sa ano. I-compare mo siya sa, sa real estate. 
stocks. Ano pa ba yung iba pang pwede mong sabihin na in comparison nun? Real estate, stocks, mga uh, other investments like yung mga MP2 ganun. Yung mga iba't ibang investment, mas lamang pa din yung overall return ni Bitcoin for the long term. So, yeah, mas malaki yung portfolio ko, mas malaki pa din yung portfolio ko dito sa crypto. So, mararecommend mo, mo ba mag-stick? Yup, of course. Ano kung ang, kung sakaling mararecommend mo, saan platform maganda mag-stick? Actually, the best place to stake is in crypto.com. Kasi in crypto.com, meron ka dito action mo kukuha na. Pwede ka makakuha ng visa card kay crypto.com. And of course, pwede ka mag-stake up to Hintayin hang natin yung kanyang... Ayan. You can actually stake your cryptos up to 14% on cryptos and 14% on stable coins. So, if you want to stake your coins, the best place to stake is in crypto.com. And you can actually use my referral link na makita dyan sa description down below. Or you could use my referral code which is Gabs Crypto. And you can claim up to 50 US dollars in bonus dito kay crypto.com. At saka guys, may napansin din ako dito. Ang pinakamagandang stake sa crypto.com is Matic. Tinan niyo yung staking terms kay Matic. 12% oh, ang laki. So, I think pinakamagandang stake dito is Matic. Pero right now naka-stake ako ng Ethereum, crypto.com, ay oh, saka ano. Yeah, Ethereum. <coughs> Pakita ko sa inyo yung stake naka-stake sa akin ng na, ano, crypto.com. Ito. So, kaya gusto ko si Crypto.com. Maganda yung app nila eh. Mas. Well, for me, honestly, kung i-compare mo siya, parang ano siya eh. Parang nagko-compare ka na Android at app, iOS. Halos, tinan nyo guys oh, yung 300 US dollar na investment ko kay Crypto.com. Ano na siya ngayon? 900. So, from 300, naging 900 tayo dito kay Crypto.com. From staking, and of course, pag-increase ng valuation ng coin. Then, tingnan natin yung Crypto Earn Wallet ko. So, every week, kumikita ako ng 0.0001 Ethereum. So, every week, may free Ethereum ako na makuha by just staking my coins. Ayan, no? Every week, meron akong nakukuha ang free Ethereum. Ayan, free Ethereum. So, Ganun kaganda yung staking, guys. If hindi nyo naman itatrade yung staking, if hindi nyo itatrade yung coins nyo, mas maganda na i-stake yung inyong coins. So, yeah. Mas maganda mag-stake talaga for me. If, if for the long term ka. Take note, iba investment and trading. So, if investment habol mo, crypto.com maganda. Dito sa crypto.com. Anyway, let's end the live stream in a minute kasi matagal-tagal na tayo. Abangan na natin itong breakout. Tingnan natin kung magbe-break si Bitcoin dito. Itong short, very short term. Tingnan natin kung maabutan natin ito. <laughs> so, di ba po kapag nagka-consolidate, ang isang possibility is mag-pump. Bakit po yung Tether stablecoin? Bakit, bakit siya lang po yung ganun? Kasi, stablecoin talaga siya eh. Ang purpose yun talaga is to be stable. Hindi naman, hindi ka talaga mag-expect talaga ng pump talaga. Things fianonize for the donation. Fianonize. Oo, oh, tama. Fianonize. Kaya pala piano. Kasi puro piano ka. Sa crypto channel. Ay, sa crypto channel. Sa YouTube channel. Well, di pa natin siya never break. Dito pa din tayo. And mukhang nag-resist pa din. So, abang-abang pa din tayo kay Bitcoin. Kailan kaya natin siya mabreak? Ayan, no? So, kaya if break natin to with volume, this is a good long opportunity dito. Kailangan lang natin ng volume at candle confirmation dito para makonfirm natin yung move for the very short term. So, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa din siya mabreak. So, remember, paano ba ito, marami din nagtatanong, kailan ka ba mag-enter mag sa trade? If nagkaroon ng candle close dito, if nag-close ito dito sa taas, tapos may buy volume, 
doon ka lang papasok after ng candle close. Ganun yung ginawa ko dito sa ano eh, sa Bitcoin. If you're going to look at the 4 hour time frame. Hindi pa ako nag-enter kay Bitcoin not unless nagkaroon tayo ng candle close above. Dito ako nag-enter mismo. Ayan, sa area na yan. Yung pullback niya yan. Diyan ako nag-enter sa Bing Bond. Ayoko mag-enter ng ganito eh. Kasi, if, let's say naka-open pa yung candle, possible kasi na mag-decline siya. Such as yung nangyari dito oh. Akala mo magpapump na siya, pero hindi pa siya nagka-candle close. Kung nag-enter ka dyan wala pang candle close, baka nasunugan ka nyan. Kasi, hindi pa confirm yung move. So remember, confirm lang yung move if may candle close. And maganda mag-enter pag nagkaroon ng pullback, doon ka mag-poop mag-enter. What does crypto staking mean? Staking means, uh, kung yari meron kang coin, meron kang Ethereum worth of, worth 200 US dollars. Ngayon, kung wala ka namang gagawin sa si Ethereum mo, pwede mo siya ipahiram sa mga platform. Let's see, si Crypto.com. Ipapahiram mo yung, ipapahiram mo yung Ethereum mo sa Crypto.com para laro-laroin nila, para mag-circulate yung Ethereum sa network nila. And then in return, ang, ang gagawin ng Crypto.com is bibigyan kanila ng more Ethereum in return sa paggamit ng kanilang in return ng paggamit ng Ethereum mo sa network nila. So, magkakaroon ka ng interest basically. In in traditional ter, in traditional ano, in traditional market, kung yari meron kang pera sa ano, BPI, tapos nilagay mo siya dun sa ano, sa long-term investment kay BPI. Di ba may minimum may minimum si BPI na 50,000 pesos para mag long-term savings account? So, kung gusto mo mag-open ng investment account, uh, in, kung gusto mo mag-open ng investment account kay BPI, kailangan mo ng 50,000 pesos and then sa 50,000 pesos na 'yon, ang mangyayari is lalaruin nila yung 50,000 pesos na yun within the BPI kasi of course gagamitin nila yun sa pang-loan, gagamitin nila yun sa pang-utang or sa mga credit card. Tapos in return, si BPI magbibigyan kanila ng interest sa inyong pera sa savings account nyo. So ganoon na ganoon din yung staking. So, meaning lang, nagkakaroon ka ng interest pag ginagamit, yung, pag ginagamit nila yung iyong asset. Ang pinakiba lang, mas malaki yung interest ni, ano, ni staking as compared to as compared to traditional bank. Kasi si, ano, si, si, ano nga, diba? si crypto, mas mataas yung valuation niya. So, mas mataas yung interest ng crypto. Yep, para ka lang nag-deposit with higher interest yield. Yep, ganun na ganun. Kung baga, nag-MP2 savings account ka. ba diba sa pag-ibig MP2, ganun, meron silang long-term investment. Anyway, nag-decline pa din tayo dito. So, let's end this video now. Hindi pa natin nakita yung breakout. So, possible na mag-break siya to the upside or to the downside. So, abang-abang lang kay dito. If nag-break siya to the upside, then of course, that's a good buying opportunity. Pero if nag-break siya to the downside, shorting or selling opportunity yan. So, ibang-abang lang kayo dyan sa 15-minute time frame for the very short term. Pero long term, mid term siguro. Looking good pa din tayo Bitcoin for the mid term. Ayan no. So far so good pa din tayo Bitcoin dito. Anyway, let's end the, let's end the live now and If you find this video useful and informative, please give this video a like, guys. And if you want to see more contents like this, please subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next video. And bye-bye for now.